The most important thing I need to stress here at the beginning of this video is that I have not played Days Gone yet myself. And this is not a review video from me. This is not even me giving my opinion on the game itself. But what this video is, is a follow-up to the one I made, I think it was two days ago at this point, where I talked about my excitement for the game and how based off of everything that I've personally seen and the way some individuals who played it earlier talking about it and the way Sony Ben, the studio, is talking about it, that it could end up proving a lot of people wrong and end up being a really phenomenal game, a game that surpasses people's expectations. You know, I even said at one point that because of Sony's mandate that anytime a studio wants to do something that's already been done, like a post-apocalyptic world with freakers in it, people keep telling me not to call them zombies, so I will call them freakers. You know, I even said that maybe this could be one of the best open world, um, you know, post-apocalyptic games we've ever played because uh, the story seemed like it was going to be good, the character seemed like it was going to be good, and it seems like I was wrong. And I did say in that video that if I was wrong, I would make a follow-up video kind of retracting some of the things I've said. Now, I can't retract everything. Like, I can't retract the fact that I still am excited to play it because I, I'm hoping that my experience will be different because I still like what I see. Like, that's the thing. Um, aesthetically speaking here, when I watch gameplay, when I... Uh, watch the trailers, I can't help but get excited for this game, to whereas with other games, um, you know, if, if I'm like on the fence about them and they get bad review scores, then maybe I'm like, mm, maybe I'll save my time and money. I'm just really hoping that when I do play Days Gone, it's not as much of a letdown as some of these reviews are making it seem. I'm looking at the Metacritic score right now, and it's currently sitting at a 71 based off of 45 reviews. So, it's not... The worst thing, obviously, it's far from the worst, but it's far from the best as well. And uh, I think it's safe to say, if I'm being honest, a lot of people were maybe expecting a Metacritic score higher than 71, maybe like a 75. And I think, you know, a lot of people were hoping for maybe like an 80. Now, I want you to understand, I'm not making this video to make it seem like, oh, everybody should determine what they want to play based off of review scores and Metacritic scores, I'm not saying that. So do not take it that way, okay? What I'm trying to say here is that we do need to take this into consideration. We do need to look at review scores, I think, for a reason, because these are, you know, it, it, it does provide a clear, concise, general consensus. You know, when you have pro professionals, I guess we can put in, in parentheses there, uh, people who are, you know, it's their job to try to properly uh, review a game and, and give their opinion on it, we do have to understand that it is all just based around an individual's opinion. But the interesting thing about Metacritic is that it's compiling a bunch of individuals' opinions who, again, it's their job to do this. And so that's why I think Metacritic scores, to an extent, are important because, again, it provides that general consensus. And I don't like having to come out here and make this video, obviously. It's a shame that this has to happen. Um, it's just like I've talked about before with a lot of Xbox's games that end up getting uh, lower Metacritic scores and how it may not necessarily matter to, to the people who are enjoying those games. But, you know, it was really disappointing for me when State of Decay 2 came out and I saw the Metacritic score reviews and I thought to myself because of how excited I was for the game that there's no way, there's no way it's that bad, right? Like, we've been waiting a long time for this game, you know, and it, it just was really strange because when I played it and by the end of it, I kind of realized that, you know, I understand that Metacritic score. I understand why now it's not getting really positive reviews because even though it was a mostly enjoyable experience for me, there wasn't anything there that really did anything really great, right? It just did things pretty well, okay, and it didn't build off of the first game in a really meaningful way. So I totally understand why that's the case, right? And it's not justifiable because by the end of it, I really just wanted something better. And I'm really hoping that with Days Gone here, that's not the case. But I don't know, man. Like, I do take Metacritic scores somewhat seriously, again, because it, it, it's 
if there's something I'm really, really hyped for, and maybe I'm overly hyped for it, like in this case with Days Gone, and then I see the Metacritic score, and it doesn't really reflect the amount of hype I'm feeling, maybe it lets me know I need to take it down a notch, and it's not going to be maybe as good as I was expecting. But looking at some of the reviews here, um, it has 31 positive reviews, 19 mixed reviews, and one negative review. Now, the highest review here comes from PlayStation Lifestyle, uh, so not really going to go over that. They gave it a 9 out of 10. Um, but then we have Game Spew, 9 out of 10. A lot of these I've, I, outlets I've never heard of, like Video Chums gives it an 88. Um, WCCF Tech gives it an 84. They say uh, Days Gone puts Ben Studio once again on the map of all PlayStation gamers after many years of oblivion. While it doesn't deliver any meaningful innovations in terms of open world and gameplay mechanics, it's a fun game that sports gorgeous graphics and a surprisingly great story slash cast of characters. So that's interesting because it, it seems to me like, based off of all the reviews I've read so far that are positive and negative um, or mixed, that we could say, it seems like this really is going to be one of those games that is going to tear people right down the middle because I've seen people saying that the, the thing I've been seeing people say like that's uh, definitely agreed upon is that the game doesn't do anything uh, really that new or innovative but it's dependent upon the actual gameplay and the layers of gameplay and the hours of gameplay because that's where it seems to tear people that and the narrative I've seen people say that the narrative is not good it's boring it's bland and I've seen other reviews saying that it is really good it is really interesting and it really enhances the game so maybe this is going to be one of those where it's going to live or die for some people based off of the actual story. It is a single player game and the same can be said for maybe the gameplay. Maybe this type of gameplay isn't the type that will be universally loved by everybody, but for some people they're really going to like it and for others they're just not going to be able to stand it. That's starting to seem like how it's going to be uh, based off of these reviews. So let's move on here to some of the uh, lower reviews because a lot of these are like 8 out of 10 um, there, there's a lot here I'm looking now there's a lot that are like 8 out of 10s a lot of 75s um, true gaming gives it a 75 trusted reviews gives it a 70 games radar plus gives it a 70 uh, push square gives it a 70 keep going on here IGN gives it a 65 they give it a 6.5 so it says, Days Gone feels bloated like a movie that goes on for an hour longer than it needs to or should have. It's messy and confused, but peppered with genuinely thrilling encounters with rampaging hordes of zombies and occasionally breathless firefights. There's a good game in here somewhere, but it's buried in a meandering storyline, repetitive, repetitive missions, and just too much obligatory stuff to do without an eye on the smaller details that could have given it much more character. Ouch. So, I mean, yeah, I, I hope that's not how I end up feeling about it, because that doesn't sound very good to me. That doesn't sound very fun. And to, and this is, again, why I'm making this video. I believe this game was going to prove everybody wrong, but IGN's over here letting me know, not that I take IGN that seriously, honestly, but, you know, we have to accept that they are a bigger outlet that a lot of people do go to. Um, IGN's over here saying that uh, this game is going to prove anybody wrong, apparently, so... Moving on from that, uh, let's see, Screen Rant gives it a 60, uh, I'm trying to, Twin Infinite gives it a 60, Destructoid, 60, GameSpot gives it a 5 out of 10, and they said, I, it says here, I did a lot of things in Days Gone, I burned every single Freaker Nest, I cleared every ambush camp, I maxed out my bike, I took out a few optional hordes just because, like Deacon with Sarah, I kept going because I hoped to find something to follow a thread to a possibly fascinating or satisfying or impactful conclusion, but at the end of it, all I, I'd only gotten scraps. Ouch, man, ouch, that one is bad, that... I mean, this per that person's just pretty much saying they did not have fun. Like, they didn't find anything meaningful here after all the stuff they did in the game. I really hope that's not how I feel, man. Like, this is upsetting, right? Like, I, I wasn't expecting this. I don't know why this keeps happening to me. It's like, it doesn't matter whether I'm, I'm, I'm heavily supporting PlayStation or Xbox. I keep getting every time. It's like, I'm, I'm cursed here. Every time I'm rooting for a game, it just doesn't seem to to do all that great but I mean you know again this is a new IP and one thing that I will say was true about what I said in my video talking about how Days Gone is going to prove everybody wrong is that Sony Ben does have a lot to prove and they have a lot of pressure on them and 
you know, not every studio, unfortunately, is capable of of delivering on that or surpassing expectations like we've seen with Guerrilla Games and, and Naughty Dog and, um, you know, and even Insomniac to an extent. Although I think Insomniac's had a pretty consistent track record and they're not first party. But I'm saying that because, you know, we have to accept that it's not always going to be the way we expect it to be, right? The way we want it to be. And it's unfortunate. I'm, I'm curious to see how this game sells now because we know that, like, we, we know that Sony wants this game to be the next franchise, but based off of some of these reviews and the, and the Metacritic score and how it's just not, it's not reviewing the same way that a lot of their recent first party stuff has. Like, Sony's been on a roll, right? And it's like I said in that video is that it's been a long time since we've seen a flop. Now, I don't think we can call this a flop, right? Like, the Metacritic score may, may end up going a little bit higher, maybe a little bit lower, although I think most of the reviews are out now. I don't think I'd call a 71 a, a flop uh, critically, right? But it's far from the huge success that we've been seeing with Sony games. Now, uh, there's one last... I have one actual negative review here that I've seen. It comes from Slant Magazine. Never heard of them. Uh, they give it a 3 out of 10 saying the game meets the baseline level of quality we might expect from a big budget at joint, yet it remains tiresome, a tiresome, empty experience. So there are, I think, two here that have yet, as the t at the time of this recording, to post their scores. Uh, Eurogamer hasn't, and Kotaku hasn't. So who knows, based off of those scores, we could end up seeing a lower Metacritic score or a higher one. It's actually at 72, by the way. I, I don't know if I said it was at 71 or 70. But yeah, I, I again, I'm really making this video because I want to show you guys that I am not going to damage control things. Like, I, I know there's a lot of people wanting to paint me a certain way, and that's fine. I know that that's going to happen, uh, and people are free to do what they want, but I just want to let you guys know that I'm not the same person I was before. If you remember when a lot of Microsoft's games came out that didn't do so good. My first instinct was let me let me go on the defensive here because there's no way this could be real, right? Because just because it's not lining up with what I want it to be, everybody else must be wrong. Talk about delusion. I'm not that person anymore. I realize now that Metacritic for me plays an important role because it lets me know like, hey, again, maybe your expectations are a little bit too high. And and in this case, it seems like they were. Like, I'm, you know, I made a video and I, I expressed how excited I am for it, how I think it may prove a lot of people wrong, and that might not be the case. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's a terrible game or a bad game. I think Days Gone in the end, and again, I'm going to have to wait until I play it and I do my own review of it, in the end, Days Gone might just end up being an okay game, or at the or a decent game, or at the very least, a fun game to play. Again, State of Decay 2, I, I'm, I'm mentioning this game because I'm expecting maybe a similar experience where, uh, hopefully it'll be better, a little bit better though, um, where I, I was, I had very high hopes for the game, I was very excited for it. And it didn't necessarily let me down, but it didn't do anything to really bring me up either. I was just kind of in the middle with it where it was a pretty good experience. It was a decent experience. Um, you know, it, it was 30 bucks. This game is 60 bucks though. So that's the important thing. I'm, I'm hoping that paying the $60 price tag is, is justified. That's why people care most about these reviews and about Metacritic because they just want to know, is this worth my time and money? And we're going to have to see. I think this is going to be one of those games where it's going to be different for each individual. So that's going to do it for the video, guys. Uh, I, I didn't want to make it too negative because, you know, again, like, I haven't played it myself. So I don't want to sit here and say, like, oh, man, it's a disaster. What are we going to do? Oh, it's terrible because I may not feel that way at all. I may play it and be like, wow, I don't know what these negative reviews or these mixed reviews are talking about. Days Gone is awesome. Or I may play it and be like, okay, this is really not that great. Or I may play it and be like, oh okay, this is, this is all right. Not too bad, not too great. It's just fine. So yeah, let me know your thoughts about this down in the comments below. I will be interested to see what you guys have to say. Be sure to leave the video a like if you did enjoy it, if you could appreciate the honesty at the very least, right? Um, and uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new. Hit the bell notification icon and feel free to share the video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.